Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion here in this brand spanking new year, right? The farther away we get from the whole coronavirus, I think the better we all feel. And anywho, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am really excited uh, today to have this talk with you about paying yourself first. You know, and, and this is just so important. And, and usually, and actually I wrote a, a Psychology Today article on this a while back. Might have been a year ago. I'm not really sure. Maybe it was two years ago. Anyway, it was more related to the Rona, but this is true always. You know, and, and often the, the phrase, pay yourself first, we, we hear coming from the mouths of financial advisors. And it's certainly some very sound advice when we're talking about money. You hear, I remember Susan Orman was Oprah way back when I watched the Oprah show and it was full tilt Oprah. You know, I love her so much. Um, Susie Orman, Susan, Susie Orman used to talk about, you know, it'll all in the end, when you look back and connect the dots, it all worked out. You got to pay yourself first. I think they suggested 10%, but this podcast episode is not about money. So we're talking about paying ourselves first as far as, you know, taking good care of ourselves. That's what we're really talking about today. You know, a lot of people wait unnecessarily, you know, my big thing is if not now, when, you know, I'll start taking care of myself once my second job ends, once I don't need the second job, I'll start taking care of myself starting next week. Once I get the downstairs decluttered, I'll start taking, you know, that I can do my, then I can have room for the treadmill or the whatever. It, it's a lot of, and we, we do that it, it, because it's very easy for us to, I think, to rationalize and do what's comfortable and easy. And, and that can be, can be a heavy lift to get started at first. Um, but then it gets easier and easier and easier. It's also important if we're talking about something physical, which is not all with this whole podcast is not all about exercise with the exercise thing. It is true though, that it's gotta be something you want to do because willpower only takes us so far. And if it's not inviting, the atmosphere isn't inviting. It isn't, isn't something you really want to do. Uh, you know, it's just not, it's not going to work in the long term. hate to tell you that, but that is just the truth. It has to be something that you were excited to do and moving towards rather than, you know, have it being, you know, like a military drill when you get up in the morning. So that was, you know, strictly about the exercise thing, but that's, again, that's not what the whole po podcast is. And so way back when, where I, not way back when, a year or two ago, whatever, it was definitely in the heat of the Rona. Um, I came up with some tips to really get into a, you know, to shift into a better habit, lean into a better habit of, you know, sort of practice, you know, taking good care of ourselves. And so the question is, how do we jumpstart ourselves to get back on the self-care track? And this is all inclusive. We're talking about exercise. We're talking about eating well. We're not talking about being vegan. No, no offense to vegan. I've got some best friends who are a best friend who's vegan, but we're talking about just doing better than we have been, right? I'm a big fan of do your best. And I, I stay clear of the P word, meaning perfect, not healthy for anybody. We're just talking about leaning into some and shifting into some, some better habits that have us better off, you know, today than we were yesterday, that sort of thing. Okay. So the first one is first tip is to tell yourself that it's okay to Kate, to take care of you. You count too. Self-care is not selfish. Here's the thing. When I, when, I, when I wrote this, I'm sure I had in my mind, though it can be any adult anywhere, I'm sure that I was thinking of, of moms, you know, because they're, and it, again, it can be true for anybody because, you know, uh, parents taking care of kids, moms and dads, parents, or uh, parents taking care of their parents, if you're in that stage, you know, whatever the reason is, or maybe you've, you've got some children by love, who are hanging around because, and they're part, you know, become informally part of your family. We had some of those when our kids grew up, kids that just needed some loving and they were in and out and here and there, maybe doing some extra for them or who knows. Um, or maybe your job involves a lot of emotional, a lot of emotional investment because you're out there making a difference with all kinds of people. But regardless of, of whatever it is your role is, you count too. And, you know, Oprah talks a lot about this, keeping ourselves filled up. You know, what's in the cup is for us and what overflows is for everybody else because there's no honor in martyrdom because we're not good to ourselves or anybody else if we're, if we're drained and burnt out. So 
you count to self-care is not selfish. Actually, I did a workshop called that one. It was called hashtag self-care is not selfish. This can be especially difficult for mothers due to centuries of societal messages. Okay, number two, realize what a yes ho- yes hangover is and learn to say no. So no is a small world, small word with big power. Boundaries are a good thing. Um, I, I did a, a a post for Instagram just not that long ago. It was Robert Frost talking about, um, you know, checking when he built a wall, what he was walling in and walling out. Boundaries are a, very, are a very good thing because they tell us that we value ourselves. We have to value ourselves enough to not allow ourselves to be walked on and taken advantage of. That's It can be in a small way, it can be in a medium way, or it can be in a big way. But we, when we put out there that we aren't valuing ourselves, it's like tattooing welcome on our forehead. And people don't need to be evil demons to take advantage of you. It's just human nature to want to do what's easy. If you offer to bake the brownies for the 19th row, a time in a row for a PTO, why would anybody say no to that? You're offering, right? And then that person ends up not being appreciated and getting you know resentful and angry, just pissed off. And it's not healthy. It's not healthy. In order to set boundaries, we've got to know our value within. The third one is to learn to manage your time. And here's what this is about. Our life minutes are of the greatest value. You know, I'm always talking about life minutes. Uh, these are our most valued commodity. So it would be talking about, we are talking about spending these life minutes, our life minutes, as if they were cash. Begin by hacking away at the inessentials of your day. This will free up loads of time. Get rid of what you don't necessarily need to do. Scratch it right off. Okay, the fourth one is do like Ben Franklin and wake up early. You know, I know when I say this when I do uh, in-person workshops um, versus the uh, audio podcast, obviously, I get I get some, some strange looks sometimes because you can tell the sleeper inners right away. And I hate to break it to them, but most most highly successful people that are out there do not sleep in. I'm not saying once in a while, a little vacay, but you think of, I'm thinking of you know, Tony Robbins and Wayne Dyer and Oprah and the, 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 the lots of the athletes out there. And then the, the high roll and the high roll and motivational speakers like Tony Robbins, there's lots of them. They all have a morning routine and usually involves some spirituality. They have a plan. They get up and get it done. I'm just saying, it's just the truth. Um, so, so when we wake up early, this gives us a jump start on our day and we can often get three times more done during the early hours. I'm definitely a big fan of getting up early. Um, this leaves us more time later in the day for leisure. So it's a life minute saver. Plus the rest of the house is often asleep and this can be wonderfully peaceful. This is true in our household too, too. Not that we have a lot of sleeper inners and my husband and I are new empty nesters as of like this morning, actually. Uh, our daughter just, our youngest just moved to Denver. So uh, keeping myself busy today for sure. And my husband gets up early too, but I just get up earlier, you know, and on the weekend, um, if he sleeps in an extra hour, it's just, it's peaceful. It's just totally peaceful. Um, and we get things done that way. Five is declutter your home. Start with one room or a corner at a time. Set yourself up for success with doable goals. Realize that clutter outside of our heads causes clutter on the inside. And actually, I've read all kinds of things about the whole feng shui thing. And you can actually start with a sock drawer. Start with a sock drawer because how the brain works with with dopamine and getting dopamine fixed. When we have closure anywhere, no matter how small, whether you just finished a paper, wrote a letter to your grandmother you've been waiting on for months, um, or, or, or organize a sock drawer, there's a dopamine fix to the brain and it feels good to, to, to finish projects, big or small. So this is great momentum when you even start with something like a sock drawer or a, a small closet before you take on, you know, the junk drawers in the kitchen or start with one smaller one. Uh, but this is a very good way to, to declutter the inside of your mind by decluttering what's going on on the outside. And then six, I have carved out some alone time in solitude. Well, I can't say enough about this one. Even card-carrying extroverts, such as myself, will benefit from a little bit of quiet. Solitude enhances self-esteem, creativity, and overall well-being. 
Solitude replenishes what the hustle bustle of the world depletes us of. I cannot say enough about carving out solitude. And remember, the bar said it, do your best. Again, if you live in Manhattan, you can visit Central Park, and it's huge, even though there's lots of people in New York. Um, I've done this many times myself. It's so easy, actually, to find a corner to Central Park because it's, it's just it's plush. You can just, although we did see a rat the last time we were there, which is a little gross, but, I mean, that's where they live, right? Um, seven, get a plant. Bring some nature indoors as it gets colder. Bringing, sorry, bringing some nature indoors as it gets colder can lift one's spirit and remind us that we are surrounded by life. And spring will eventually make its way back into the rotation. It, plant, house plants, and anybody listening to me who knows me is like, seriously, is she doing a, a, you know, trying to encourage people to get house plants? Because we all, those who know me know that plants fear me. I either overwater, forget to water for months. I, I actually had a dual plant suicide off a deck when we lived in Vernon, New Jersey. Two of them just said, no, not anymore, not her. And off they went, right over the top and down they went. Very dried up. So um, they're probably saying, what are you doing this for? But actually, I've gotten a little bit better. I've, I've now found my, my, my niche uh, with succulents. They're amazing. You can, you can water them one, like once and forget for two, for two or three months, and they're still okay. And it, it, they're incredible. Uh, next to a cactus, like they're probably the best thing for me. Um, so that, so get a plant. Plants bring just a nice vibe to your house or apartment. Number eight, spend at least five minutes being mindful each day. I cannot say enough about mindfulness. This does not mean sitting in a, you know, lotus position as if you were a Tibetan monk on the mountaintop eating yogurt. No. Mindfulness is about being present in the moment. That's it. Mindfulness is about being present in the moment, being here right now, whether you're doing the dishes, whether you're eating, whether you're having a conversation, whether you're stacking wood, it's about being in the moment right now. And there's, uh, there, are, you know, it's, is a ton of research based, you know, scientific evidence that mindfulness heals us physically, spiritually, mentally. I can't say enough about it. That's it. Just cook, do the dishes, read to a child, sip some hot tea or whatever, whatever, while being fully present in the moment. Nine, buy freshly cut flowers at a grocery store for you. I am great at this. Wow. And I know I have some friends who are great at this too. So in fact, it's funny at Hannaford's, which is the store by us, they don't even put them in. Well, they'll ask me, do you want a flower bag? But they kind of know they're for me. So they don't, they, they, it's funny. They kind of think, they kind of sort of anticipate my no, I don't need the, the flower bag. It's funny. Right on. Sometimes I put them in the bathroom. Sometimes I put them, I put them all over the place. Okay. So then you place the flowers in a highly visible spot to enjoy. This will add some fabulous color that will lighten up the room and tell yourself you deserve these flowers. They are a gift from you to you. 10 is find your power song. Oh, I'm so, oh my God, I'm such a huge fan of power songs. This is discovered, not chosen. Kind of like the wand in Harry Potter. The power song chooses the person. Mine is Think by Aretha Franklin with a close second being Respect. And I play them both. I start with Think. I'm often on top of the coffee table with a spatula or uh, some other cooking utensil I grab from in there. And it's just, oh, I crank it up and I just, oh. And then once you uncover your own power song, find a way to play this by yourself and don't hold back. Dance on top of the coffee table with a serving spoon or for a mic and let yourself go. And that whole thing about um, dance as if nobody's watching, I dance as if everybody's watching. These are all ways to take care of yourself. Music lifts your spirit. So there you are. I gave you 10 Tips to take care of you and pay yourself first. Keep yourself filled up so, there are, so that you are good for you and good for everybody else in your life. That is it. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, mindful day.